we agree. Um, and do and we agree? I uh, I saw I saw the list, and I agree with. Let's see. Let me go all the way. Wait, oh no, wait, I'm freaking out because our audio is because out of, it does out of it in reverse today. order. So oh, I am I'm so going to say right one. Now. I agree with. Can you even hear me? Five. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, because our audio is all out of whack. It is driving me crazy, and I'm so furious right now. Uh, so I'm like, sure I I sound bad, and I'm sure if I'm hearing you sound bad, then yeah. Yeah. Well, you were glitching, then I was glitching, and I'm just like I'm over it. Just so over it today. And I'm going to yeah. have to figure it out between this week and next week. So um, what I was going to say is you have you agree with some of it and you disagree with some of it. Is that correct? I I agree all the way up until number six. Oh, OK. So number 21 is Memoirs of an Invisible Man. I don't even remember that movie. I'll be honest. Ghost of Mars, one of the worst films I've ever watched. I liked it. Uh, I didn't love it. The Ward, but have, see, have see, I seen it? I I like John Carpenter, so it doesn't Me matter. Too. Like I what love it John is, Carpenter, but I that just... movie was so bad. Ghost of Mars, so bad. Oh, I didn't, I didn't mind it. Uh, the Ward. I don't think I remember seeing The Ward. Actually, I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. And I didn't know that he did Elvis. I'll be honest. Yeah, I had no idea that he did Elvis. Um. So, Village of the Damned. Ooh, ooh. What what is what is mean? What what does this mean? VST issues. Yeah, that means that my audio plugins. Now, what's funny is I would love to say it's the audio plugins, but that would require my CPU to be like at being used. I'm at 30 percent usage. So what it actually is, and we've had this issue before, is it's a bandwidth issue. And so in the past, like if you were to watch last season, the professor was sending me stuff and he was on wi-fi and he was like yeah and the audio was like that's yeah. how i know like the difference so village of the damned i love that movie and I superman seen it was in in forever it. i i'm gonna have to go back and watch these i like that movie too um it's funny because a lot of these like early ones or the the mm -hmm. bottom ones if i've seen them i've seen them once and i and i was like mm, don't really want to see yeah. it again dark star 1974 i didn't know he went mm. back to 1974 uh starman, starman. I really that was good starman did you like starman mm -hmm. yeah yeah it was pretty good uh escape from la uh the worst of the l of the escapes but i enjoyed it the part that i had a problem with uh can you guess um the basketball scene you or the it. big wave. What, no, the basketball scene. It's 100% the basketball scene. It is like 100% the basketball scene. Um, vampires. I enjoyed Vampires. I loved actually. Vampires. Now, this is where I said this should be number six. Okay, you sh you pop this up. Okay, that makes sense. Yes. That makes total sense. Somebody's watching me or someone's watching me. Who's watching me now yep. is what's in my head. 1978. I don't remember that film that much, but it is from I don't, 1978. I don't either too much. So. This is the one that I dug, The Fog. Yeah, I love The Fog. I was a fog. big fan. Yeah, I, I thought it should great. be higher on the list, to be quite honest. Yeah, um, I mean, that. Yeah, but all the other ones now are, like, iconic. Now yeah, we're getting I was about to say, like, we're getting into what I call iconic. classic territory. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, 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 classic territory. Prince of Darkness. How Christine Chris. is number nine, I don't know. Like, I'll be honest. I, like, that right. seems low to me. Um, but then, Assault on Precinct 13 is my favorite John Carpenter film probably of all time. I understand. Yeah. But I'm weird like that. It's got such a premise that would never work today because oh, people have 100%. cell phones. And yes. but basically, if you had never seen Assault on Precinct 13, first of all, don't watch the new one with Ethan Hawke. No, no, Sorry, no, Ethan. no, no. That no. movie's horrible by comparison. And the reason that should horrible, have been like Assault, Assault on Precinct like 14. That's yes. what they should have called it. Yes. Yeah. Or or we're going to not assault anything because it's not the difference right. between 1976 and today is cell phones. And even when they made the new assault on Precinct 13, they had cell phones. So it's very well sketchy. E even even yeah. with like this one, there was still suspense. There was lots of suspense in it. There the was. new one 
didn't have it w- it was just action like mm-hmm. there we go it was an action film without yeah. the suspense you know the reason for the suspense in this film if you've never seen it um basically um this the guy on the far right is a criminal the girl in the middle is a secretary and the guy on the left is the cop and they you can tell at- by the way she's holding a gun exactly she's ready to <laughs> hit him in the head <laughs> <laughs> they've run out of they've run out of bullets at this point. So right, they're right. at what's called a decommissioned uh, precinct, and uh, the gang of the movie basically um, cuts the lines to the precinct. So they have no outbound anything now. Now, oddly enough, or or light or anything, so that's how they can get away with this. Now, I thought the backup generators would have come on, and then they would have had um, right. walkie talkies, but didn't work. I body love body bags. bags. I haven't yeah. seen that in forever. I'm going to have to go back and check that one out as well. Yeah, I'm going to read it. They yes. Live. They Live, I love. Uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. I do too. Uh, and oh, it my is God, so, yeah. It's just well done. Escape from New York, the best of the escapes uh, yeah. by far. I agree. Um, I think the reason I love that film is because it's both campy and realistic at the same time. Right. Which is a very fine line. I mean, you got to, ooh, ooh. Well, That's why L.A. didn't work. It was just campy. Right, but... But then you got Kurt Russell that isn't really like so it, in today's standards, that would be like The Rock or Ryan Reynolds. It would be. And 100 percent, 100 percent. And Kurt Russell in this is just like a normal freaking dude that that yeah. like is tough. Well, I mean, he's, he's just, not normal. He is Snake Plissken after all. Well, yes. I mean, whenever he shows well, up, that's the thing I have to say about it, though, is whenever he shows up, they're like, oh, my God, it's Snake Plissken. Like right. everywhere but, he goes. But I'm not saying he he's in shape, but he's not yes. in like the rock shape. Oh, 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 you're talking about buff. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. I agree. I agree. He's he's normal human looking like he doesn't right. look. Look, first of all, he's not six five. Let's just start there. Right. He's like normal. I think he's probably my what's your guess on Kurt Russell's height? Ooh, five uh, ten. Damn it. I was going to go with five <laughs> ten or five eleven. So I'll go with five eleven. <laughs> Kurt. OK. Russell height. Beep, beep, beep. 511. Ooh, nice. But uh by comparison to the rock, I mean the rock is ginormous. Oh my I mean he uh, literally yeah. is like <laughs> and it's funny too, a lot of people think he's short because he's always taking pictures next to like Shaquille. Right. And Charles Barkley. And yeah, you're right. shorter than professional basketball players yep. in the mouth. Of madness. Now, this is my favorite John Carpenter's movie of all then time. I'm going to have to watch it again because, again, I, I think I put this list up here to give me uh, ideas of yeah. stuff to watch because this. So Sam Sam Neill is a, give me a is an author. Down. Yes. And he writes this book and he ends up somehow in the town in his book and he can't get out. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. He's a horror author and it is just it's one of those movies where. Like I don't know if it stands up today, right? But right. It might be dated. It might have that like. If you put yourself feel. in mm-hmm. that, like, and buy everything, like it is fantastic. Yeah. And uh, we are now at some of the best films ever made in the history of films. Big oh, trouble yeah. in Big little, trouble little China. China. Oh my God! Did I ever want to grow up and marry a girl that with blonde hair and green eyes? Oh yeah. So no doubt. No doubt. I am one hundred thousand percent on the same page. And, um, it's such and a good is film. this is this where Mortal Kombat's characters actually Mortal came from? Kombat. I think so. Because I think they yeah. literally were guys that were watching this, and then they saw, and then they, and they were like, "Yeah, let's make, let's right. make all our Mortal Kombat characters." Now, here's a good question: When did Mortal Kombat come out? I don't know. The first Mortal Kombat, I think, actually. A couple years after that, maybe. It, doesn't it? A Mortal Ga- Kombat I, I think so. arcade mm. game. Because that was 85. Uh, really? There's so many. I know. N- it, it has to be like Sega, because I don't think that was a Sega. Nintendo game. 1992. So you are oh. so on point with this. I think <laughs> you have literally hit the mother load on this. So right? our, our theory, because I'm on the same page. Right. Big Trouble in Little China. The guys watched it in 86 and yes. they were nerds like we are. And they were like, let's make a video game. And then they made Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Something like that. 
brutality. I love How Halloween. in the world? Okay, this is the one that I had a real problem with. Halloween is two? Oh, it's yeah, two. because... Two, mm, yeah, but number one... Oh, man. I know, but two! It's no, two! No, number no. one might be the, the greatest movie ever made. I, I like, agree. honestly. I agree. I agree. I, I And you see, that's the problem, is that I could flip one and two. I could easily... So let's get well, to okay. one, just so everybody knows what we're talking about. Number one yes. is The Thing. The Thing. So... Yes. Where so, where I where I put Halloween as number two is yes. the thing had uh the monster wasn't just a monster, it could go anywhere, it could get in anybody. Yes, and so yes. all, all the actors mm-hmm. had to be like spot on actors. Right. And in, this is early, this Halloween. is way before yeah. anything like that. This is 82. Well, I mean, they Russell had... was like Disney before this. And then this comes out. And and, and the (laughs) thing is, they did have Invasion of the Body Snatchers, but Invasion of the Body Snatchers wasn't a single parasite. So it wasn't like like the thing was the thing, obviously. And you know what? If we're making if if it's a John Carpenter list, I could be wrong. And I, I need to rethink this because in my head, I'm like, Halloween should probably be like five because there's three or four other films that are more John Carpenter. Does that make I, any sense? I understand sense? that, yeah. Like, Halloween is a big-budget, like, Hollywood film. And yes, John well, Carpenter made it, but... Yeah, not... we're, we're... Well, I I would praise John Carpenter for Halloween for the the character. Yes. Because... It it was a it was a teen scream movie. Like, mm-hmm. he went, let's, let's make a teen scream movie. Yes, and, and he did a great job. And he did. Because... Mm-hmm. But the thing is, like... God, if we're going to say and he like might have also his... been the writer director on that as well, like it would be interesting to see of these films, which ones he's the writer, director, producer right. in the film. You know what I mean? Because the thing had it was artsy, too, and it had like a vibe to it. It had long pan shots. I mean, it it uh, it was and just it's so funny good because the thing and the fog are a double feature for me. Yeah, I, I, I can yeah, see that. But, yeah, but honestly, at the same time, it's kind of like watching the same film, sort of ish, kind of ish. Right. You know what I mean? So, but to me, I've always put the thing and the fog in the same like. So, I I, I understand whatever. that with yeah. the thing, you can't go outside because mm-hmm. you'll freeze to death. Yes, because and then you're in you the can't Arctic. stay yes. inside mm-hmm. because you don't know. Die. You don't know yeah. who the thing is. Yeah, no, I that's get what it. made I get it. that so freaking scary. That and. Oh my God! Now here like that is, that lives up today. Yeah. Now my modern equivalent of oh I got to put my phone on. Do not bother me ever because you're bothering me now. Um, yeah, yeah. My modern director equivalent of John Carpenter. Any guesses? It's a director, <laughs> somebody that we like. You've seen a lot of his stuff. Oh, oh, Bruno Mars. No, that's a musician. Oh. Bruno Mars is a musician. <laughs> Haven't we had this discussion before? It's Peel. Uh, no, no. My modern equivalent. Let me let me get him on screen, and you'll you'll get it. And I and I'll yeah, explain I why too. It's Peel. It's Peel. Jordan no, Peel. No, Mr. Peel. No, 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 no. What? Um, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, and I know I'm spelling his name wrong, so. I'm going to put his picture up on the screen and see if you know who this is. Uh, hopefully it won't have it won't give me away and die me out because I want to get. OK, I have him on the screen and I will tell you right now it is not Jordan Peele and you'll see why not Jordan Peele. <laughs> not Bruno Mars. Do you know who this is? No. OK, but if that, you tell me his name, I will I will probably know it. Oh, no, right away. I'll give you a movie from dusk till dawn. Oh, that's Robert Rodriguez. You got it. Yeah. Now, the reason wh- whenever that... whenever yeah. you say from dust till dawn, I think Quentin Tarantino. Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> no, no, no. That makes sense. I should have gone with Spy Kids. That would probably would have yeah. been like you would have been like, oh yeah, I know that guy. Now, the reason that I put Robert Rodriguez in the same category isk of, hey, why are you doing that? I don't Quit know. That. Quit that. But, but I, I know. I, I mean. I, I get it. I like no, no, Robert no, no, no. Rodriguez. There's a specific reason why, though. There's a very specific okay. reason why. When you, um, I've watched a lot of behind the scenes with different people. And when Robert uh-huh. Rodriguez is working on a film, 
on this side of his uh, studio is an editing bay. On this side of his studio is a music bay. And he spins his chair, runs over, edits, spins his chair, runs over, and makes music. And if you know oh. anything about John Carpenter, John Carpenter yeah. makes almost all of his own music because 100%. he's broke. Like by the time they get to this musical score, he said that in Precinct 13, Assault on Precinct 13, he had two days to make all the music. Well, it's cool because now he's touring. He's not even worried about directing. He's like, hey, I'm just going to tour with all my music that I made from all my shows. Uh, of course. He's made yeah. some of the best like soundtrack music that I've ever heard in my life. 100%. I mean, he's just, he's got it dialed in. Let's just say it that way. 